Hi, and welcome to Seabreeze Services. I'm RJ, and this is Tech Alley. I'm here to answer questions and to hopefully, you know, help you understand a little bit about the technology that we use every day. I've been in the business since I was like 10 years old, so uh, I do appreciate the use of these machines in the hands of young people and our perspective on those things as they appeal to us or as they don't appeal. But there's two sides to every story. Uh, this is going to be a quick video because I wanted to post this every week and uh, this is the first chance I got this morning to get shot. So. Happy Saturday. I'm trying to do this every week. And this is the, uh, the Tech Alley question and answer session. I did write down a couple of questions. So uh, let's see if we got something here. Um, Anne writes in, she says, the internet and phone is out. What next? Uh, yeah, that happens a lot, actually. And uh, the internet goes out and the phone goes out. Um, yeah, we're going to be seeing that a lot more because the phone and the internet share the same network, essentially. So when one is out, so is two. And, uh, well, when you call the service for your connection in, uh, they'll suggest that you make sure that everything is plugged in tight. And uh, surprisingly, that is the number one cause of things not working right is the fact that over time things get loose and they will get knocked out of the wall or otherwise so take a look at the modem take a look at the router make sure that the lights are on and uh if if there's still a failure to be able to get internet then you can call the service company that provides your internet and find out if there's an outage in your area that's what i would start with and uh you know, if it's something different, then uh, you can always call me and let me know what's going on with that. <laughs> All right. Thanks for that question. Um, let's see. Uh, Rachel writes in. She says, what is the best way to clean a monitor? The reality is that we used to have glass screens, and that was just glass cleaner. Nowadays, we have LEDs and OLEDs and all kinds of fancy monitors that have very sensitive technology under the surface. Um, however, uh, and this is recommended by most of your companies that uh, a mild, uh, you know, soapy uh, substance on a dry cloth is going to be the best effect. And you put the, the cleaning solution on the cloth first and don't spray your equipment ever. Don't, just don't. That's probably a bad idea. Uh, but, you know, I've used uh, Windex. I've used uh, alcohol on a, on a ball. And just be very careful not to uh, let the liquid get inside uh, the monitor so that you're not causing damage to the internals. In a lot of ways, uh, the new monitors have even, you know, dedicated cleaning solutions that are provided by the manufacturers. So check on that if uh, you have any other types of questions about screen cleaning, uh, I would contact the manufacturer or look it up on our friendly search engine. Uh, thanks, Rachel. That's a good question. Um, okay, Larry says that, uh, Larry from Vida says that avoiding phishing scams is difficult. They keep emailing me, and uh, it's uh, it's true. This is something, Larry, that's happening to everybody more and more. And uh, the amount of unsolicited emails that hit your inbox every day is grown multiple times uh, in factors. So let's talk about how to respond to unsolicited emails in general. It doesn't matter how amazing or how enticing uh, a deal might sound on an unsolicited email. It's still unsolicited and therefore has 
pretty good chance that it's not authentic. And so, you know, one of the ways to protect yourself is to just never allow any of those messages to, you know, penetrate your, your solid understanding of, you know, you have uh, no reason to have to claim a Walmart gift certificate or any of those other types of things. And when you get a 1-800 number to call, it's probably also a bad idea to play along with the scams. These kinds of scams are happening more and more to where you send an email that is rather uh, generic in its nature. You may seem like it's personal to you because there's a PayPal charge or otherwise, uh, but you have to look clearly and closely at the sender to find out if that's an authentic message from the places that you uh, communicate with on a normal basis. And if it's uh, in all question, go back to the source and talk to your bank or your uh, credit card provider to find out if, in fact, uh, you do need to take any actions. Because some of those messages are, in fact, looking and, you know, they fake the messages that would be authentic from your uh, banks and from your vendors. So if you look at those as, uh, you know, the sender is not correct, it's 100% going to be a scam. Uh, so, you know, those are the kinds of things that help you, Larry. In that way, you know, most of the time we have to consider as a business to have a business security policy. And your security policy right now would be to never accept anybody's word for anything uh, as it comes across the email. Okay, and you know, it, it's, it's a rather harsh way to go, but unless you've already had contact with that particular person on that particular email, it would be very likely that, you know, you can be uh, enticed into a scam and uh, you know, just resist. If it is very important, they'll try again until they get through. That's a, that's a guarantee. All right. Thank you for that question, Larry. Uh, let's see. What else do we have? We have um, Melissa says, my printer is not printing well. It uh, has lines in the output. Can you help? So, uh, Melissa, first, I'm sorry that your printer is having those problems. It's, uh, it's very likely that when you see lines disappearing or new lines added on a printer, it is uh, a failure of the print heads in an inkjet printer. In this case, uh, you would probably be looking at a, a print head cleaning process to take place and it, barring that not working, then, uh, you know, it's an unfortunate reality that inkjet printers are disposable. In a lot of ways, uh, after I'd say about a month of non-use, then an inkjet printer's uh, very vital circuitry and uh, the capillaries that, that hold the ink and the very fine print heads are going to get clogged. And when that happens, there are no user serviceable parts to that end unless you replace the printer. And that's, uh, that's an unfortunate call that's made by the printer makers. Uh, but if you you know, are doing a lot of printing, Melissa, I would say, think about using a, a laser jet printer or a laser printer versus a, uh, an inkjet printer. Because mainly the, uh, the cost per page is the thing that we pay attention to in the trade. And for a, for a full coverage inkjet page, it's probably about a 75 to $1.50 page, you know, considering the cost of ink today. Uh, that same page with the same coverage and the same output only with a laser printer is going to cost under a quarter. So you're saving uh, quite a bit and it does add up over time. So it's a great question and I appreciate you asking. The inkjet printers are not my favorite for that reason that they are um, easily drowned out. If you use it constantly, it doesn't have that issue. But if you do go away for a couple of weeks or a month, then that potentially is going to be a sad story to return to. And, uh, you know, more to come. We'll see how the manufacturers deal with that. 
as our landfills get filled up with used printers. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, that's some of the messaging that I have today. The the Seabreeze Patreon is always available if you want to support what I'm doing and giving away uh, this information and helping people with their computer problems. Uh, you can visit me at uh, patreon.com slash Seabreeze Services, or you can come to my website at uh, renecotate.com. Either one will invite you to join the supporting network of clients, and uh, we would be happy to have you on board so that I can give you uh, a more personalized service. Okay, so thank you uh, to all the people that have already joined the Patreon, and thank you to the folks that have yet to join that will be joining uh, when they need computer service that comes without the all the extra. 